Hi and welcome to another video of UiPath Studio X. My name is Nidhi. I am an RP developer and UiPath MVP. In this video, I'm going to try out the first exercise of Reboot Your Skill program. Uh, so before we start, let me give you a brief idea of this particular program. Uh, so this is a 10-day program from UiPath and it is designed for all the citizen developers to let them start their RP journey. Uh, so if you enroll in this program, you will be receiving weekly emails and uh, those emails will be redirecting you to UiPath Academy where you have all the course material and the few exercises to try out. Uh, so this is where I am. I have enrolled in the course and um, in my learning path, this is the first exercise which is built to your first automation. So let's try it out today. Uh, so the exercise is we have to deal with three applications. One is an Excel file, one is a web page, and third is the Outlook. Uh, so there will be an automation that will be using these three applications, and let's see what the automation is. So we have to read the data from this Excel file, which has two columns as name and birthday month. And it has some data in the rows, which is David and July. We have to read this data from Excel and fill it in this web page, which is find unicorn name. So we are going to find the unicorn name of David, which has, yeah, and he has birthday month is July. So let's do it manually first and we will create the automation to do it automatically. And then July is what we have to choose from the drop down. July and when you click on get unicorn name, uh, you will be getting the unicorn name of David, right? So you have to now read this value and send it uh, through Outlook uh, with uh, with the value that you have just now read from the web, right? So this is what the challenge is. Now, a few things that we have to take care of here is since we are dealing with an Excel application and a web page, it means we will be needing the extensions. So as you can see, the things that you have to consider is, make sure that you have the Excel add-in installed in UiPath Studio X, uh, so that UiPath Studio X and Excel can actually communicate easily. The second thing you have to make sure is, to let UiPath Studio X communicate with this web page, the browser plugin is also installed, or the browser extension is also installed, right? Uh, so how to check it? For that, you have to go to your path Studio X, go to Tools, and go to your path extension. Now, since I'm using Chrome browser, so I've already installed the extension, and since that, that's why I'm, I'm getting the install uh, button here. Similarly, I've already installed the extension for the Excel, that's why I'm getting this button. Otherwise, you'll be getting the install button. If you want to check how to install these extensions, um, I'll be dropping the video link in the description. You can go and check it out. Now, let's start uh, creating our first automation. Go to the Start tab and click on New and choose Blank Task. Let's rename it as Reboot Your Skill. Unicorn Name. And click on the Create button. So we have a blank project ready. And now the first thing that we have to do is we have to open this particular web page from the automation, right? Uh, so since uh, before we actually automate anything in this page, we have to connect UiPath Studio X with this resource. For that, we have to use an activity called use application browser under the resource. So I'll just drag it inside the designer panel. And now you can see indicate application to automate. I'll click on this and now you can see this green window is appearing. It means the extension is working and a UiPath Studio X can communicate with the browser. I'll do a left mouse click and you will see uh, the screenshot of the application and the URL. And now we have to read the data from the Excel application which is this. So now we'll be using a resource called use Excel file because uh, this is a new resource that we want our automation to connect with and start using. 
So now the Excel file is what we want to read next. This Excel file is stored in my desktop in this particular path. So we can simply browse from here. And go to desktop here. And this is the Excel file that we want to read. Right. So once we have connected with the Excel file now, we can now read all the data from the sheet and the rows. We can iterate, we can do anything. So before you actually uh, read the data or send anything to the application, right? we have to first connect to that resource. So that's why we use these resource activities. Now, after the Excel file is connected uh, with VFR Studio X, we want to type the data in this particular field. So for this, we have an activity called type into. If we want to type anything into a desktop or a web application, we will drag it inside the use Excel file. So you can see the scoping here. Inside the use browser activity, we have the use Excel file because we want to first open the web page and then read the Excel file. And for each of the Excel file row, since we only have a single row right now here, so we are not iterating. So from the data in the Excel uh, Excel row, we want to type into an application. So that's how the scoping is being done. Now indicate this element here. You can see this green rectangular button. So this is a target. This is where we want to type. Do a left mouse click. And how to uniquely identify this particular element? Uh, this will be done with the help of an anchor. So this blue rectangular area is your anchor, which helps to identify the element uniquely on the screen. So this has been automatically identified by the UFR Studio X. If you want to change it, you can change it from settings or if you want to delete, you can delete it, but we can keep it uh, as of now. And I'll click on the confirm button. Done. Now this is the element or the uh, UI area where we want to type. Now, next thing that we have to uh, mention in the activity is what we want to type, right? Type this select a value field is there. If you click on the plus button and if you go to Excel and if you say indicate in Excel, uh, you will be getting this option only when the plugin is installed, the Excel plugin is installed. So I'd say indicate in Excel and you can see this your path integration Excel add-in button. It means uh, we are able to read the Excel file through Studio X, right? Now I'll click on this particular cell, which is A2, which is uh, the name of the person. And I click on the confirm button. Now you can see it has already taken from the Excel file, sheet number one, A2 cell is from where we have to read the data and type in this particular element. This Excel name is coming from this reference uh, because uh, the automation do not use full path to mention from where it is reading. It gives a reference name. If you want to change it, you can change it. Uh, but since we are using only single Excel file, we can keep it as it is. So from this particular Excel file, which is here, uh, sheet number one and A2 is the value we are reading and typing here, right? And now the next thing that we want to do is we want to select uh, the value from the drop down, from this drop down. For this, we have an activity called select item. If you go in the activities panel again, I already know the name of the activity so that I can easily search it. You can see select item. Now drag it after the type into and make sure of the scoping. Keep it inside the use Excel file. Again, indicate in the browser. This is your target in the green area. And this is your anchor in the blue. Do a left mouse click and say confirm. Now you can see all the values from the web page are already here. And you have to choose the July as the value, right? Uh, so you can simply say July, or maybe if you say Excel, indicate in Excel, birthday month, right? Say confirm. This is how you can supply the dynamic values. If you do not want to mention from the drop down, 
directly, right? Uh, so for example, if you update this value to June and then you want your automation to dynamically read this value and then accordingly choose the value from the drop down, then make sure that you choose the value uh, from the Excel file itself, right? Now, the next thing that we have to do is click on the button on the screen, which is get a unicorn name. So for that, we have an activity called click. And this is the click activity. I drag it after the select item. Indicate here, this is your button. There is no anchor identified by your Studio X and that's fine because we only have a single button on the screen. Click on the confirm button. And you can see single left mouse click is what we are doing. So once we do a click on this button, uh, next thing that we want to do is we want to read this value, which will be different each time, right? So to read the value from the screen, we have an activity called text. I'll drag it after this. Again, indicate in Chrome, I'll click on this. This is the value we want to read. So this will not be a fixed value, as I said, this will be changing each time if you're putting some another name, some another month. So this is going to be dynamic value all the time. That's why it's important to give the anchor here. So this is the anchor, which is going to be fixed always. Uh, the David and the July, these values can be changing if you change these values in your Excel file but this is not going to change. So this becomes your anchor and click on the confirm button. Now, once you read this value, where do you want to save this value? So we click on the plus button and say, create variable. And let's name it as my unicorn and press okay. So this value that you have just now read has been saved to this temporary variable, right? And this is what your um, automation steps would look like. First, open the application, which the, the URL is mentioned here. Then open the Excel file or connect with the Excel file. Uh, the path is here, right? Then from the Excel file, type the values, select the item, click on this button and read the unicorn names. These are the things we are performing. So once we are done doing all of these actions, next thing that we want to do is I'm just collapsing these activities so that we have enough space on the designer panel uh, is we want to send the email through Outlook. For that, we would have to first attach a UFR Studio X with that resource, remember? So whenever you, you are using a new resource or a new, um, what do you say, application in your in your um, automation, you first have to connect with that particular resource, right? Giving the path or giving the URL, whatever that uh, that resource requires. So you are using a desktop Outlook app. So we keep it outside the use application browser because. Once we, I'll just collapse it again. So once we are done with all of these steps, next or the last step is we want to send the email, right? Now, this is my account, Outlook account. And if you actually go to the mail, mail section, you can see all the activities, right? Uh, again, here you will get the activity to send the email and which is this, I'll drag it inside the resource. So again, make sure the scoping is correct inside the use desktop Outlook web, you place this activity, right? Now, which account do you want to use? You want to use your Outlook account. So this is the reference, as I said, right? If you want to change the reference, if you change it as my account, it will be automated, automatically changed here as well, right? Uh, to whom do you want to send? Uh, let me send it to myself as of now. So I'll go to text and say, so this is the email address of CC we do not want to do, uh, what should be the subject. 
my icon name and press save body to know to send uh, the unicorn name that we have just now read from the application so body go to text uh, by default html was selected right but we want a simple text to be sent so go to this option click on the plus button and say text i already have the text copied so i'll simply paste it here so I'll say hi, just wanted to let you know that I changed my name to, to which name? I'll click on the plus button and say use variable which was already saved, right? So I'll say my unicorn name as a text because this something I'm sending it as a text, not as a number. Uh, it is not a true or false, it is not a date, it is simple text, right? So I'll choose my unicorn name as text. And I would simply say cheers. That's all. So this is what is static or fixed. This value is what we are reading from the application and it will be dynamic if you're changing the name and the month each time, right? So I click on the save. Another thing make sure is uncheck this. We want, do not want to save it as draft. We want to actually send it, okay? So the automation is done. Uh, we have the complete workflow right here. If you expand this, application number one, which is a web page, application number two, which is a Excel file, application number three is our clock. Um, so let's see what happens. I'll refresh this page so that everything is new here. All right. Let me press run button. So the bot has started. It is entering the first name, month, read the value, and send out the email as well. You can see the last run successful. Uh, we have got the value as well. And let me check if I've got the mail as well. And we got the mail as well. You can see the value is energetic raindrop mist, which is coming from this particular option. Now let's try out a few more things. And let me put it my name and my for three months. And let's see what my unicorn name comes. go to the application back and it's typing the name month getting my unicorn name and sending out the email right and should be getting the name soon and i got my unicorn name as well right so that's all about the first exercise of Reboot Your Skill. Um, in the next video, we'll be looking at the second exercise uh, of the same program and we'll be doing the hands-on again. Thank you for watching.